You're watching an episode of Spirits People Live with Johnny Michelson. All right, here we go. Welcome, welcome. Another Tipple Tuesday, another Spirits Tuesday coming at you straight from London town. Lee, what's going on? We got some people popping in here. Cheers, guys. Sipping on the old fashioned tradition be true. As usual. I can wave at wave at people. We got Jeremy in the house. Oh, we got Steven already. Amazing. Got Rob Warburton ninety one. Whiskey hype. What's going on? What's going on? This is amazing. So Tuesday is Spirits People Live and Spirits Tuesday all at the same time. I don't know if anyone recognizes this one. Lee, British Bourbon Society. Oh, we got Tom Prophet in the house, also British Bourbon Society. I made my old fashioned with the first barrel pick that we did with the British Bourbon Society. It's a few bourbon cask strength. Oh, Laurent is here. What's going on, buddy? So as people start popping in here, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk for a minute before I invite Steven on to join. So Steven is my counterpart, co-host, and fellow Spirits People live crew member. Um, but as I've mentioned a few in in a few places. I will be giving away a sample of this to anyone who joins this live stream. There will be a competition. So if you leave a comment on the live stream, you will have a chance to win a sample of this. So there you have it. So let's see if I can add the good gentleman of Stephen James. All right. Rum Diaries, where are you? There you are. Add. Let's see. See if this works. It's always a gamble. Cheers. Oh, sideways. <laughs> <laughs> How did you manage to do that? No, I claim. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to mess with people's head. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see if I can change it. <laughs> this has never happened. This is amazing. Just a simple solution to that, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> Grab the phone and turn it around. <laughs> All right. Not too much of a technical issue. <laughs> no, no, not too bad. How's it going, man? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. No, no, cheers for asking. Yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a minute. Yeah, it has. It's a few months, hasn't it? Yeah, since, since we last spoke. I, yeah. I hope you have a drink of some sorts. I have to. All right. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't make my mind up. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I've gone for a uh, for a corn and oil and a uh, and a glass of something. Uh, glass of something neat. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually pour myself something as well because uh, mm -hmm. I've decided that Spirits Tuesday is the time to have two drinks at all oh, times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's been a hell of a Tuesday. Oh my gosh. How's how's life? Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Started the year off with a uh, with a busy um, vibe in the office, but busy is good, I suppose. So yeah, how about you? Getting back straight into it. Well, I'm mm -hmm. officially uh, combined unemployed and self-employed, so I I'm nice. great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, so I've um, I've mentioned this a few times. I, I don't know if I've talked about it on on these these sessions, but last year I decided to go uh, freelance, and then at the end of the year I decided to take a break and um, trying to trying to figure out if I can set up a business of my own. Right. So that's um, that's in the works. We'll <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, cool. So have you have you tried this one? So I I've mentioned that I was going to give away a sample of this. Have you had a chance to try it? No, no, not yet. All right. So um, there's a sample coming your way, but also to someone yes. in the audience. So I'll give you a sample of this. It's it's 
It's really quite, it's quite phenomenal. I'll actually pour, I'll pour myself a dram of it right now, just because. And I have the British Bourbon Society glass as well, which I finally received only last week after, I don't know, like pinging back and forth with one of the admins on the British Bourbon Society site for about six months, I think. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's been a minute. Cheers. British efficiency. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've signed up for it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna. It's gonna. From from what I understand today, there was some kind of uh, political decision made. So I don't know if there's gonna be a wall of sorts at some point. <laughs> well, if yeah, it, it's it's all a bit of a mess, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, I don't. I don't actually. I I don't follow that stuff at all. I don't actually watch the news. I haven't done that for about ten years. Yeah, good well, choice. I'm, I'm, I'm a happy chap just living in, in some kind of ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> You'll know right. the important stuff. Right when the <laughs> one shadow starts looming over the earth as the meteorite's about to hit, you'll be fine. Uh, what's happening now? <laughs> no, that's all you, man. That ain't me. <laughs> oh, there Jesus Christ. Um, I flipped <laughs> the camera. I, I have a tendency to do that. That's what's happening. <laughs> I was just I was just waiting at people joining here. So Simon Kurt Horis has joined. Rum Rum Mac has joined. Christina Wolf seventy nine oh nine has joined. So I don't recognize these names. I'm assuming these are these are some of your rum peeps. Yeah, I know Christina. Yeah. Yeah, we got Claire Scott as well. Twenty eighteen. What's going on, everyone? Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um, <coughs> so let's 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 figure out what's happened since we spoke last because uh, it's it's been a couple of months and and the last time we spoke it was right after the rum fest and you've been yeah. awarded the rum writer of the year which is now last year so yes. what's, <laughs> what's 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 been going on what's what's happened since uh, since last time we spoke um i've written absolutely nothing <laughs> since that point there it's um it's i don't know i think w winter's set and i've been uh Stuck with cold after cold after cold with public transport, but yeah, no, there's been quite a few releases, um, rum releases out there. Yeah, we've seen uh, well the new Appleton thirty year old oh, that wow. was uh, that was released and then immediately sold out. Of course, um, yeah, always. It's been a new bottling from the Whiskey Exchange, um, a Mount Gay bottling that they had. There was the um, the anniversary edition of uh, uh, Cask Strength Mount Gay. Generally, you don't get anything above the forty-three percent, or in certain certain markets, it's forty percent. Right, right. But, um, but there, there was a Cask Strength release. Came in a beautiful wooden box. It was a it was a really good rum, but it was it was it was in about one hundred and fifty pounds a bottle, Jeez. and it's it's not it's not four or five times better than a bottle of the XO. Okay. So yeah, it was um, at Rumfest. We got to uh, kind of a select group. Got to go to um, the whiskey exchange offices, um, meet up with Billy and Sakinda, and uh, got to go in the private tasting room, oh, nice. um, which was just the bottles, and they were crazy, and they just kept coming to the shelves, and it was like, yeah, just open it up and um, pour yourself a drop. You know, are, are you serious? I've, this is like bottle one of one. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Just get it open and poured. And you're like, oh, my God. But just before that, we were in the, the little bar setup that they've got there. Mm -hmm. And then and we, we we got a little kind of a a sneak taster of a um, of a seven-year-old cast strength that was being released. Um, that did come out towards the back end of last year. We thought it was going to be about £100, but that was down to about, I think it came in just above 80 Um That was a very good run. Nice. Um, so that was uh, that's definitely worth picking up. Cool. Um, yeah, and then obviously you get the uh, the never ending wait for the actual release of Destino, the um, the four square bottling. Oh yeah, yeah. I have two bottles of the um, of the, the limited Bellier's seventieth uh, anniversary. Okay. One that I got through a uh, through a friend that very generously um, sold it to me for the, the 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 price that he bought it for, which was uh, with no completely no markup. Which is it's nice to know nice people. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, the second one I uh, I was fortunate enough to pick up in Barbados last year, but yeah, we, we're we're still waiting for the uh, for the for the bottling to come out. The actual the blue label bottle, the the two thousand six hundred, I think it is. Okay. Run of the uh, of the run, so 
I keep seeing it appear on various websites in Italy, and then it appears, and then it disappears, and then it looks like it's sold out. It's just going to be another night waiting at midnight for for, for listings to go up on, uh, on yeah. Italian websites, get which seems to be the finger ready. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was funny because the the Destino. There's there's a guy at the rum fest and saying, "Oh, people say Destino." It's like, "Oh, it's Destino." Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would I would said Destino. It's like, oh no, like before I could say it, he he basically could see in my face that I was about to make a mistake, and then he <laughs> corrected me on the spot. It's like, "Oh, the Destino." <laughs> like, that's the yeah, one. That's that's the yep. one. definitely. <laughs> we got Bobby's Bobby's windows from Canada saying he's got the 2005 Sin Fandel. Mm. Not too shabby. Got a few more people joining here as well. What's going on, guys? Josh, what's going on, buddy? Another Canadian. We got people from from all over here. It's awesome. Cheers. Teaching a class. All right. <laughs> no drinking and and, and teaching. So, um, in terms of of what's coming up, do you have anything planned for um, for the websites? Any reviews that are in the making that you want to you want to reveal, or do you want to keep that secret and just bomb the world with it when it's ready? <laughs> I've got plenty that's <laughs> due or overdue. But aside, I've, you come back from from Rumfest every year with about thirty different samples of random stuff that you end up swapping when you're there. Yeah, it's like. We're you know maybe we're a little bit uh, reluctant to pay postage. <laughs> the wrong guys are. Seems like the bourbon, looking at the bourbon guys, it's like you know yeah I'll send a sample in the post. Yeah. So it's either reluctance to pay postage or we just can't be bothered to walk to the post office. But you, you all the samples that you've promised someone throughout a twelve month period come to fruition at Rumfest. So you walk home with a case full. <laughs> so I've got plenty of awesome stuff that I picked up there. That's but why there's um, wearing backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. You just go there because somebody will just pull out a, a small um, bag of samples, and then away you go. And yeah, it's the beauty of having a bag, and also checking your bag into the uh, into the luggage area as well, so you're not walking around with uh, bottles clinking together. Yeah. But now the, one of the big ones that I'm looking forward to to getting onto the site this year is uh, Mahoba Rum from South Africa. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they were. Then um, 2017, they had a few a few less bottlings, but they were still pretty interesting. And over the course of that 12 month period, they've they must have put so much effort into it, and they've 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 really grown as a producer. Um, <clears throat> the stuff that they're putting out, the way that they're doing things, um, they've got a really good setup there in terms of you know getting down to the the um the laser cut um wooden labels and things that they put on some of the um the higher uh, range bottlings. But they're massively interesting. So hopefully um I'm be far enough a series of questions to to Robert at Mahoba and uh getting some insider information with regards to what they do, getting some photographs from within the distillery, which there don't seem to be a huge amount cir- circulating at the minute. Right. To try and get get something in there, and you know, it, it, 2019 I think is going to be a big year um, for them. I've got a little bit of information with regards to where orders have been placed for some of their product. Nice. And um, and let's just say it, it's it's going to be it's going to be a really real growth period for them. I think 2019, and That's it's interesting exciting. stuff. The stuff that they're, that they're doing. I mean, certain expressions don't work as well. They've got their, they do um, like a whole glass cask uh, maturation thing with the, the the charred staves in there. And that doesn't give too bad a um, a result, but they take that and then that, I think they um, they age it in uh, American oak. So they chuck it in in barrels, and that one's too woody for me. Right. I mean, maybe I mean the, the bourbon guys that I've that I've spoken to, woodiness in in a spirit is everything that 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 a lot of people are after. Yeah, um, I so, mean, stuff to like, some degree, to some degree. Yeah, but it, it's it's overdone for me. That one is, but they have a French oak that's um, <clears throat> you. Uh, it's ex um, Cape Red wine barrels, um, so beautiful French oak barrels, and that it, it comes in at around sixty five percent ABV, but it doesn't drink like sixty five percent. It's beautifully well balanced. 
Um, it's got everything you want. It's got kind of like the the, the tartness of uh, of red berries in there. It's typical grassy notes, beautifully integrated oak. Mm. It's it's a class bottling, and it, it's a very good rum. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get something on the site for from Hober Rum for a well within the first couple of months of the year. <laughs> 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 but I'm hopefully trying to go back and uh, what I try not to do is it'd be easy to jump on the as soon as Four Square release another exceptional cask selection to throw out a review of another one of the exceptional cask rums. Mm. People buy four square rums irrespective of what the write-ups are. So what I kind of want to do now is go back and do a, a retrospective of the releases so far because I didn't touch any of the releases from uh, Port, Zinfandel, 2004, Criterion, Dominus, Premise, 2005. I didn't uh, review any of those rums because there's so much content out there already. Yeah. Um, obviously, the unicorn that we're all after is the 1998, which would be a, a exceptional cask, the first release of the exceptional cask. I don't have that official bottling, but there was a, I think it was a Russian independent um, spirits um, company, um, Paulson Collection, mm. that released a lot of other spirits at the same time, but they released the 98 Foursquare. Uh, it is the same juice apparently as the um, as the ninety eight exceptional cask selection. Unfortunately, um, I have one open bottle and two in the locker. So yeah, as soon as I saw it, as soon as I found out, the beautiful thing about it is, is it's um, it's entirely um, twin column. Um, there's no pot still in there from oh, wow. majority of, of the four square release, like the exceptional cask. There are elements of, of pot in there. It's a pot column blend mm-hmm. for most of the stuff that they do. I think at the time, um, obviously 1998, the distillery reopened, or the distillery opened its location in 96. Um, so I think the market was dictating, or at least Foursquare were being told that the market was dictating and people wanted a lighter spirit. So they released the um, the, the entirely coffee column. Right. It's a beautiful rum. Twin column rum's never tasted so good. Nice. Um, really, really good rum. So, yeah, I'm hoping to, to kind of go back from stage one um, and, and try and do everything in sequence because there have been some very good releases. There have been a few mistakes that Richard knows that he's made, like putting the word finish on the port cask bottle. So he's got a port cask finish. It wasn't finished. It was the double maturation. Yeah. But he's made a rod for his own back because wow. then every question is now, <laughs> how long do you finish it for, Richard? How long do you finish it for, Richard? And he's like, no, no, it's marketing bullshit. Don't listen to it. <laughs> it's second, secondary maturation. So, yeah, it's um, <clears throat> and then into the Zim and <clears throat> Obviously, ABV started to, to increase on some of them as well. They were okay. original ones were out at 40. But it's starting to increase the ABV because he knows, obviously, now the market is kind of is, is dictating that people want um, higher ABV spirits. Yeah. Yeah. I think Especially the serious yeah, I think it's it's a trend across. I mean, like obviously in in whiskies, it's 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 a thing, and I could I can only imagine that rum would be the same. And speaking of um, speaking of wood, I wanted to mention this before because like you think when stuff becomes too woody, um, just for everyone who's who's joining in here who didn't see this in the beginning, I'm giving away a sample of the 20 year old Barter House to anyone who drops a comment in this live stream. So so keep uh, keep dropping those comments in there. Um, but yeah, this this here and also. Um, I was on live for, I can't remember when it was, but I was talking about the fact that the older stuff gets, the more they tend to dilute it, because if you have a cask strength, let's say 20-year-old bourbon, it's just going to be like drinking wet wood. Like, yeah. it's, it's not going to taste good, and that's the reason why they, they start diluting it down as it gets older, to try to find that balance. And the complexity yeah. of, of the wood may be what people think, still think is the woodiness. But if they haven't tasted something like a 25-year-old cask strength rye, you don't really know what that woodiness really is like. You, just get, a, <laughs> <laughs> you get a taste of that. Yeah. You, you, you need to try some of that like crazy cask strength old stuff, which, which obviously is really hard to get because it's yeah. expensive. Um, but, but yeah, it's, cask strength is, is the way to go. And I, um, I definitely encourage everyone to try it and then put a little dash of water in it because it's... Yeah. It kind of it it changes stuff. It's it's amazing. It is. It's it's like I don't know the way that I've kind of 
tried to appreciate spirits in in the run because I was um, I was the typical um, Havana Club drinker, um, and I you know I bought my fair share of the original recipe Sailor Jerry's bottles, and I know that the, the term Gateway Rums is bandied around because for the most part it's rubbish. It is the age old thing you don't encourage people to drink single malt whiskey by you know getting them to drink fireball or anything like that do you there's no way in via that but within the rum world it, everyone seems to utilize the sugary sweet or sorry the sugary sweetened bottles everyone says that they're a gateway bottle but that doesn't seem to happen in any other spirit so mm. it's kind of just an excuse for explaining why people should accept that, that there are those bottles there but I've grown to <clears throat> to enjoy I, I will buy something that that is sitting at you know fifty five sixty percent, but it's that kind of little journey to sit with it over an evening to sit with the glass to get the little online calculator up on the uh on 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 your your iPad to see okay if I add this much water then that deletes that 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 dilutes that down to fifty five percent and then you'll try it down at fifty percent and then you take it down to forty five percent. And just to, to kind of, you get, to buy one bottle of, of, of a spirit, you get multiple experiences with that one bottle. So that's why I, I, I enjoy cast strength spirit, but not necessarily going straight in and, um, and enjoying it solely at cask strength. You will try, obviously, to, to see w- what it's like, but you find your own sweet spot, don't you? Yeah. I think we try everything like raw, like completely raw, mm-hmm. like straight out of the bottle into the glass, try it. But then I think some, some, and I, I'm a whiskey person first and foremost, so like I think some whiskeys lean towards that kind of like experimentation, whereas others are just like straight off the bat, amazing, you don't want to touch it. Um, yeah. Depending on how much you have of it, like if you have a whole bottle, like maybe you'll, you'll, you'll have a dram, you'll try it out a little bit, but like if it's just good, like yeah. don't try to fix it. <laughs> just just you, you, it, just enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, you find out you find out where 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 you personally sit. Just notice the a comment uh, Bobby's windows over in Canada saying Mon Diplo is so so sweet. It's so so sweetened. They're in oh, right. different things. <laughs> they they almost, sugar. Yeah, they 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 they've started releasing certain bottles um, that are individual stills with with nothing added, <clears throat> but. I've been hearing mixed things about certain ones of their bottlings in terms of how they're running it through the still. There's um, there's something that I picked up from a uh, from a person in a who will remain unnamed in a certain tasting room on a certain Friday night before a certain rum festival. It was essentially saying that the stuff that they run through their their batch kettle isn't necessarily <clears throat> going in there as um, as a fermented wash into the barrel. Into the uh, into the still, the, 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 the potential that they're uh, that they're they're tweaking and actually and having a, a second distillation through the the, the, the batch kettle. So they're producing they're, they're taking a first run through a column setup and then putting it through the, the the batch setup, which is almost you're you're stripping out certain amounts of, uh, of flavor and aroma um, through the, the column, and then you're almost you're then utilizing the batch process to kind of get, gather the good stuff out of the stuff that's left. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it just doesn't work like that. Cause I found I was one of the people that was, was wanting the, um, the, the, the individual still releases. Cause I've just been moaning and saying, well, you're, you're providing us with these, these blends of your various stills and you're sweetening them and, and releasing them. We, we, we don't get to try the distillates as they, as, as they are. And in all fairness, I found them pretty pretty dull. Right. To be really honest. Yeah. The the um the, the two the especially um one and two the the batch kettle and the uh, and the column cell have been really dull to drink. Yeah. They've been like almost a reference spirit for what these certain things are, mm. but they're really really dull to drink. And are these are these blends or are this like? No, they're 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 single still. Um, there will be obviously blends of of, of certain amounts of barrels. Because the, the single cask thing, it, other than if you're going to an independent bottler, yes, you will get a single cask release. But single cask from the main stay producers, 
um, isn't isn't a thing in the run world, not as much as it is in, in, in the bourbon world. Okay. Um, like Foursquare will never produce a single cask rum unless it's from a, an independent um, a bottler that right. buys a, a single barrel of their stuff. Yeah. So is it more common to have like single... <laughs> Like single pot still or something like that, where it's like a like in for me to translate that like whiskey like a, a small batch or something like that. Is that more common yeah. or is it more like the the master like a Bacardi size like gigantic like massive blend? Like what's what's yeah, the more, it's, more common it's, stuff? It's 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 dependent on the producer, really. I mean, obviously you do have Bacardi and and, and all that they that they produce, um, and obviously it's 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 a huge seller because they you know they're the, they're the Tarnoy and the Hoover of the rum world. Yeah. They're, they're the brand name and people don't know what they're ordering. Mm. But um, but you get like say Foursquare, their their speciality is uh, is pot column blend. But they will release um, or they have released um, pot still um, only product, and they've sold barrels of pot still only product to um, to brokers, and some of those have been released. Um, but I think the uh, the general thing is, dependent on producer, a lot of them are, uh, are pot and corn blend, um, producer dependent. There are some people that say Worthy Park, Hamden, um, they only have pot stills. Jamaica. Which is, yeah, which is just, <laughs> which is awesome. And the marks that, that those guys produce with the various fermentation times and the yeast strains that they use are, are just phenomenal. I mean, the stuff that I've tried from from Hamden, running through from the real low ester stuff up to the just batshit mental stuff that they release, they have which is that. You know, yeah. But it's the kind of stuff that you open it over the road, and you can smell it in your house through two closed doors and all the windows shut. <laughs> And a fan blowing the the other way just to try and get rid of it. It's ridiculously pungent, but the stuff that they can produce with the pot still is 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 just crazy. But yeah, it's 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 country dependent, producer dependent, really. Um, but it's it's an exciting time with uh, with a lot of the stuff that's being released, stuff that you didn't think was you was ever going to see the light of day, like the. <laughs> the stuff that Valier released with the Long Pond releases. Oh, um, yeah. oh, four man. bottles there. I love that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you've got the going from the Wedderburn, which is the beautifully drinkable end of the scale, up to the, um, I think it's the TECA or the TECC. It's like fifth, uh, 1,500 to um, 1,700 um, grams per hectolitre of absolute alcohol. Um, esters obviously it measures like elevated ethyl acetate levels in there, right. which <clears throat> eth elevated ethyl acetate isn't, which is kind of like your your pear drop um, kind of varnish um, aromas. They don't measure the whole story just because it has an elevated level. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a tasty product. I mean the 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 T C A T C C is you could never you couldn't drink that on a daily basis. You could drink you could drink half a glass a week. Yeah. Because it runs the gamut between beautifully fruity and pungent and a bag of rotten meat. It's kind of, it runs the complete opposite ends of the scale. In, in, in The first time I smelled it, it was like pickled onions and flaming hot monster munch. It was kind of, it was it was a ridiculous combinations. But, uh, yeah, so it, it's exciting. Stuff I mean, at Rumfest, one of the best bottles that I think I tried that I had to buy out there. It was Bristol Spirits. Um, they've voiced a lot of good stuff, <clears throat> but they don't really display anywhere or they have obviously zero marketing budget. Um, <clears throat> and it was the, it's this one that's in the glass. It's the VSOC. It's the, um, I think it's the very uh, special old Coroni. Um, he essentially, he had a load of, um, John Barrett is the guy that, that owns the company. Had a load of barrels of really old um, Corona that were um, in his um, um, aging warehouse or cellars in, in Bristol. But because he'd kept it for so long, um, the ABV had dropped and it had dropped below the 40%. Um, <clears throat> so what he did was he then blended it with some slightly higher proof um, Corona that he had that was 10 years old which brought the ABV back up to 40%. So that's still only 40% on that release. But it's phenomenal rum. About eight, 80, 88 quid a bottle. 
Now, I don't get along with Caroni too much um, because it's tar and petrol and two-stroke oil and it smells like a leaky lawnmower. And sometimes that ruins it for me. Mm. Um, that overtakes it. But but when you get something like this that's that's got it's got those elements to it, those kind of earthy, pungent uh, exhaust fumes and petrol... The but it's mixed in, yeah, yeah. But it's mixed in with something unbelievably fruity, mm. and at forty percent, this is ridiculously drinkable. Nice. And I've just noticed, uh, just noticed two dinners. Rob Bosman's commented that it's a, a beautiful um, Caroni. Mm. I'll, I'll explain the nickname. It's um, it's called Two Dinners because two years ago at Rumfest, we'd been on a day's worth of drinking at Rumfest. We were in the bar in the hotel, and he uh, he'd eaten his own dinner. He'd ordered a curry, mm-hmm. eaten his dinner. And uh, then someone else couldn't manage theirs, so they handed him another plate full of food over, and he proceeded to demolish that whilst <laughs> sitting on a couple of pints. So he's now forever known as two dinners. He's now forever known as two dinners. Yeah, and uh, breakfast on the Sunday morning at Rumfest last year, he, uh, he sunk two breakfasts as well. Right, two brekkie as well. Yeah. So, but this, the, he won. A, he was fortunate to win a bottle of this on the uh, the whiskey centre. Um, only one bottle, not two bottles. All right. But, um, beautiful rum. Actually, what I may do is, if I can drag myself to the post office, I'll, uh, I'll do a little, I'll send you a drop of this. Oh. Because it's, it, it's, it's worth it. Amazing. Speak, speaking of samples, so I'll, I'll drop a spiel and then, uh, we also have a tote bag to give away. Cause it's Tuesday. Spirits yeah. Tuesday, as, as it goes. So everyone who's been watching, so the Barter House, I know there's probably a lot of uh, bourbon drinkers on here for, for natural reasons, but I today will be giving away a sample to anyone who's dropped a comment on this video. And um, so for someone who's... Did I just say that I'll be giving away a sample to everyone? That's not true. <laughs> for some lucky person who's... <laughs> That's what happens when you drink and you go live. <laughs> uh, to someone who's left a comment, I'll, I'll pick them at random after this video. Um, but yeah, thanks, <clears throat> thanks for popping in, everyone, and uh, for hanging out with us. And uh, yeah, there's, there's going to be a little bit of a draw afterwards. And uh, yeah, I'll post it up in my stories um, so you guys can, can see. And I'll tag whoever is the winner. So I know there's a, few, there's a few whiskey people on here as well, so it's not too bad. And if you are a rum drinker, I will say that this one here is actually... Um, I wouldn't say it's rum-like, um, but uh, yeah, maybe Stephen, you can you can let people know what it's what it's like when I send you a sample. So, so there, I'll give it a go. There you have it. Mm-hmm. All right, so Spirits Tuesday. This is this is where it all started. It started with this bag. Boom. Or actually, it started with the promise of this bag, and then three <laughs> months later, this bag exists. <laughs> What's um. What's happened to your bag, Stephen? Because I've, I've seen a lot of people saying, like, their wives, because this is primary, like, I have primarily male followers. This is, we're the people who drink most, I guess, in, in public. So male followers saying, like, everyone who's won, their wives steal the bag. Is that right. for you as well? Or have you, have you hold on to it? Like, no, I, I, I've, I've not allowed her to see the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I treat it well. So. Part of the reason is I, um, <clears throat> I have a tendency we try and have a one in one out policy with bottles of rum mm-hmm. um, but my wife works at, at home for maybe um four days out of five, so she's normally in the opposite end of the house when I come home from work um so my spirits people bag is exceedingly useful for carrying multiple bottles of uh, of rum on the tram home from work so the yeah the bag ended up filled with two or three bottles of rum that then went straight into the bar. Yeah, straight <laughs> in the door, bypassed it, and uh, yeah, so the bag stayed with the bottles. Nice. It's, and also, it's, uh, this, if you go to Rum Fest, they can, they, there's a lot of samples will fit in this bag, trust me. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> you carry this stuff around. Anyway, so, um, we'll do a giveaway and then we'll we'll wrap up because like these sessions are about half an hour. We're, we're a little bit over already, but I will say that if you're interested and you're not already entered into the Spirits Tuesday competition for this tote bag, all you have to do is take a picture of two bottles, such as 
and use the hashtag Spirits Tuesday, and then we'll select a random winner every Tuesday during these sessions. So there you have it. If you're just joining, drop a comment on this video, and you'll be entering the competition of a sample of this. I see a few people just popping in right now, so we'll, we'll keep saying that. And now to the actual draw for this week. We'll see how many we have. So we have um, numbers between 2 and 38. So mm -hmm. here's, the, here's the list of all the people who are in the running. So, Stephen, any number between 2 and 38, both numbers included. Um, that'll be 36. 36. All right, here we go. I'll see if I can... So I normally do this so that it's visible on the screen, but that means I have to maneuver some stuff. I'm going to hit the randomize button here. Scroll 36. Mr. Roberto Ball. This is reverse. <laughs> so no one can read it, but Mr. Roberto Ball, you are this week's winner of the Spirits People tote bag. It will be shipped to you, so send me your address. It comes in a wonderful little bag. It has a nice little tag at the back, because why not? <laughs> so yeah, that's it, Mr. Roberto Ball. Congratulations. That's amazing. Spirits Tuesday. Cheers. Ah, uh, uh, see, Lee Provost comes in here, drops a, an actual comment. I like the <laughs> the literal translation of, of that instruction. It's amazing. Lee? <laughs> All right, cool. Um, Stephen, thanks again for, for popping in. We'll be, we'll be catching up again in, I don't know, two, three, four weeks or so, um, and we'll, we'll see if you've, you've gotten any blog posts out. Um, but for people who are just joining here, if they don't know who you are, Rum Diaries, the blog has, I don't know, how many reviews, like endless? Um, it's, 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 it's getting there. Yeah, there's, <laughs> it's there's, getting there's, close there's, to endless. Yeah, there are a few to, a few to choose from. <laughs> That's amazing. And people can also see your, um, your actual collection. Uh, mm. On the page, is it is it up to date or is it uh, still there's a, there's a few not in there yet? Yeah, there are a few not in there yet, but yeah, the the numbers don't lie. <laughs> so so yeah, that's that's if nothing else, just go and check out Stephen's collection. It's it's absolutely mad. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit mental. <laughs> just a little bit. All right, cool. Um, again, Stephen, thanks so much. Uh, Rumdiaries.com. Check out his blog. Um, spiritspeople.com is also going to be taken on an overhaul um, in, I don't know, maybe this month, maybe next. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and um, <laughs> all of these videos uh, you'll be able to check out on my YouTube channel at some point when I also get around to that. So there's another thing. So now you can hold me accountable to it. And um, yeah, I'll be selecting the winner of a sample of this right after this video. And um, yeah, that's it. Cool. All right. Happy Spirits Tuesday. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. All right. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers. watching this episode of Spirits People Live. For more videos, check out spiritspeople.com, subscribe on YouTube, and be sure to follow us on Instagram, where we connect you with Spirits People worldwide.